What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Green Arrow from the Arrow CW TV series. And so here we have Green Arrow posing out of the packaging. Before we take a look at the figure, let's actually take a look at what he comes with. Green Arrow does come with several accessories. He of course does come with his quiver which does peg onto his back. He does come with a bundle of arrows that goes into the quiver. We do get his bow which has an arrow sculpted to it and the bow drawn already so I don't like that. It, I think that's a really terrible design. And then of course he does come with a McFarlane display stand. Other than that Green Arrow doesn't come with anything else so let's actually take a closer look at Green Arrow. And so here we have a closer look at Green Arrow and I'm going to be 100% honest with you guys, I'm not really liking this figure at all. There are some things to like about him, however, there's a lot of things to hate about him as well. And I think the cons actually outweigh the pros with this particular figure. Let, let's talk about his sculpt. There's a lot of nice sculpt work on the figure. McFarlane did a fantastic job sculpting this guy and giving him articulation. If you look on his hood right here, they did add this little design that Green Arrow does have in later seasons, which I do like seeing that. That's a really good little piece. I like the way the hood sits on the head. It's a really good way that the hood sits. It doesn't look oversized. It doesn't look undersized. It doesn't look like a blanket or a towel like the Mattel hood. But there's something I do need to mention is that the hood is actually tabbed into his head. If you pull the hood back, you can see there is a huge tap mark in the head. So the hood already kills any head articulation that this figure has. So that is really bad. Now the hood is a separate piece. I do have a seam line right here now. Unfortunately, it's glued down so you can't really move the head at all. I I have a sneaking suspicion that that's supposed to not be glued down, that maybe mine accidentally got glued down. So, I don't know, it's just something about that that I feel it should be glued to the head, not to the, to the jacket right here. And that's one thing I do have to mention is that this quiver comes off really quickly. So unless you're going to have them in the package at all time, that's trash, that's garbage. Having a look at his jacket here, uh, something I don't really like is the proportions on this guy. He seems long in the torso and his legs seem shorter than his torso. Not really digging the rubber jacket on Arrow. I know the Batman Who Laughs had a rubber jacket and that worked for him. I think they could have done a solid torso for Arrow here and I think they could have just made a cut just underneath this piece right here because there is a spot for some articulation right here. So there's so much that they could have done different on this figure. Again, sculpt work is on point. This looks just like his, what is it, season 6, 7 costume. I, I honestly lost track of which Green Arrow costume it is, so bear with me here, folks. Again, we do have some nice detail on it. You can see the zipper here. We have some cartridges there. We have some up here as well. So as far as detail goes, McFarlane did a fantastic job. This figure has a lot of detail on it. From his little shoulders right here, you can see some texturing in his sleeve. We do have some armored guards right here on his arm going all the way down to his hand, which they did a good job sculpting and painting it. I really do like that. Again, not a fan of how they designed this. This is actually one of the worst things they could have done. They should have just, I don't know what they could have done differently, but the jacket was definitely not the way to go with it because, well, I'll get more onto it when we have a look at his articulation, but again, proportions on this guy, they seem off. He has a the Flash's body where the Flash has that really long legs, really long torso. Uh, Oliver didn't have that in the show. He had a really slender body, but his legs were longer than his torso. And this figure 
torso seems longer than his legs. I do want to point out that he does have some fleshings right here that are sculpted on. They're not removable, but they're painted well enough. And we do have some more texturing right here in the green leather. We have some more of those, I'm going to guess, gas palettes that he never uses. Those look like gas palettes. More texturing right here. Those straps do look good and would have been a nice point to hide some articulation. Just saying. Knees done really good. The paint on the guards are good. And then we have some more of that texture right there. Boots completely broken up by the sculpt. He should have solid boots. I don't know how McFarlane could have done that. If they just recessed those joints just a little bit, it would look much better, but they didn't. Green boots, don't know where you would get green boots, but then again, he's a former multi-billionaire, so he, I'm pretty sure that's nothing for him. But anyway, yeah, the detailing on Green Arrow is good. Uh, just, it's executed poorly, and even the face doesn't really look like Stephen Amell. Uh, it just looks like somebody cosplaying as Green Arrow, and that's a little bit unfortunate. They haven't nailed the real tech face printing so yeah it's gonna look bad by today's standards so with that out of the way guys let's actually get him compared to other figures you may have in your collection and so here we have green arrow posed next to a marvel legend cyclops and a mattel dc multiverse superman here we have green arrow posed next to a wwe elite scale figure and a mezco 112 collective popeye the sailor man here we have green arrow posed next to a lightning collection white ranger and a star wars black series mandalorian and finally, here we have Green Arrow posed next to the DC Collectibles Arrow from Season 2. So with the comparisons out of the way, guys, let's actually have a look at the articulation. Now, he does have a double ball joint in the head going into the neck, but unfortunately, we can't really get to it because of this hood. Now, he does look up slightly, and I mean slightly. You get very little head movement on this guy. He can look down but the hood just pops it right back up. Does he lean to the side? Eh, slightly. Leans to the other side slightly. Does he rotate? Uh, very, very little. Minuscule at best, and uh, it's just really hard to get that head to move because of how they engineered this jacket. We do have ball joint in the shoulder, which does go forward and back a little bit. Does pivot down and goes up goes up all the way more than horizontal so I do like that that goes all the way around no issue and I think we can actually bring that a little bit forward yeah we can bring it forward and this is a nice soft piece so it doesn't hinder articulation that much we do have a bicep swivel which works no problem double bend in the elbow giving us pretty good range there we do have a hinge right here in the wrist which does go forward and back and because it is on a ball joint we do have up and down movement too and then of course it does rotate on that peg now i haven't taken the figure apart yet but i do know for a fact he doesn't have an ab crunch right here now when you use his ab well he doesn't have an ab piece but he does have an ab crunch when you use his ab crunch it folds the figure that's not how it's supposed to look and I don't know I even though it gets really good range it looks like somebody folded him in half that it doesn't look good like even the jacket right here protrudes out at a weird angle so even though we do have a crunch let's see going back it goes back fairly well and I just popped him out of his joint how about that oh no I actually popped him back in so I popped him out right now going too far back, but I popped him back in and nope, I didn't pop him back in far enough, but let's actually see what's going on in there. Yeah, we do have a, a hinge right here that allows forward and back movement, but it looks like we also do have another joint which allows for side to side movement. And I think I just popped that out was a little too reckless yeah I was just a little too reckless with it but it popped right back in no problem so that does move side to side something we didn't see with the Batman who laughs so I do like that we get some sideways movement and then of course rotation works no problem yeah I put them together so he didn't break on me so that's a good thing 
Legs do go forward, full 90 degrees, do like that. Go back quite a bit out. Out to the side, not all the way for the split, but it does go out far enough. We do have some slight thigh rotation up in that joint. Really wish they would work on that. We do have a double bend in the knee and that's really stiff, works really well. I do like that. We do have rotation right down here at the foot. We have a hinge which goes back and forward, so that works really good. Forward facing pin for rocker, so we get really good range right there for rocker ankle. And then of course we do have a very generous toe hinge. So overall articulation works good. That ab crunch, that ab crunch is terrible. But he does lean side to side, which is something Batman Who Laughs didn't. So I, I don't know. I'm not liking this figure at all, guys. I'm going to be 100% honest. So with that out of the way, let's actually get him posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have the McFarlane Multiverse Green Arrow pose for my final thoughts. And overall, I can 100% say that this is not a really good figure. There's so many things that this figure does wrong, and it doesn't help that the other figures I've had a look at did things really right. As far as the accessories go, the bundle of arrows falls out of the quiver really easily, and then his quiver also falls off quite easy, so I'm not a fan of that. Add to it, the way they gave him his bow, it's completely drawn at all times. Now, I do understand that compound bows can lock, so that's kind of accurate, but it doesn't translate well to action figures. If they had made that an actual drawstring and given us an arrow that we could have displayed with it, that way we can have them properly displayed, getting ready to fire the arrow and after he fires the arrow, but accessories on him, it's terrible. They, did, they could have done much better with him. As far as the detailing on arrow here goes, it's done exceptionally well. McFarlane did a really good job sculpting all the pieces that need to go on Arrow. Now, as far as his proportions go, he seems like he's a lot of torso and not enough legs. That's really disappointing because this was could have been a really good figure, but just like I suspected, they did so much wrong with this figure, and it turned out exactly like I said. Now, I'm not going to say he's 100% garbage, but this is a really hard figure to like. If you have a DC Collectibles Arrow or Green Arrow, I think that's a better way to go than the McFarlane figures. This is actually a miss in my books. McFarlane could have done much better. And I don't know, there's something about this costume that should have worked in action figure form, but it doesn't work here. So with that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000 saying I do not recommend you pick up the arrow. Uh, skip this figure. If you see him in stores, just avoid him at all costs. If you're a fan of the show I, and you're a fan of the costume, I guess you can pick it up. But if you're just collecting the line, I think you should avoid arrow at all costs, unfortunately. So with that being said guys, I'm King Dragons 5000 don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other multiverse videos, hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments, and if it's in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. While you're at it, don't forget to check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos, and as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone. <laughs>